Welcome to Made in Mari, the podcast that focuses on the successes and struggles of local businesses. Let's get started. My name's G, I'm your host, and today I'm sitting down with Lorraine Westley, who is the owner of Recruitment B, which is a recruitment consultancy based in Murray. Good morning. Good morning, G. Tell us a little bit about the focus of your work. So I help businesses fill their vacancies by hiring the right people with the skills and experience, but more importantly, the right fit that's going to work with their teams. Super. Where do you start in the process of finding the right people? So that process can be um, vast. It really does depend on the company, the organisation. And to find the right people, it starts with them. So the very first thing I do is go and visit the organisation, the business, and get to meet uh, the owners, the directors, the managers, um, and the teams, and uh, find out exactly who's who within the business and learn everything I can about them and their organisation values. And that's important. Oh, absolutely. And what was the inspiration for starting a company in this area? So for me, I have been working in recruitment probably for the last 10 years locally. And uh, this has been specialising in temporary staffing for businesses who have a short-term need to have um, people in quickly to keep their operations running. I felt I needed a bit of a change. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've been working as a manager uh, in those businesses and supporting, coaching, mentoring, developing staff and teams. And I missed that client contact, getting out, meeting people face to face and actually helping them with their business needs and solutions. So I thought I would explore the market Mm -hmm. for myself, put myself on the other end of the spectrum, being a job Mm -hmm. seeker and seeing what was available. But nothing really ticked all my boxes. So Mm -hmm. I wanted to go after roles that were involving people, but also working with um, businesses. And I didn't get some jobs. I got offered others that I didn't really want. Mm -hmm. And then a light bulb went off that just thought, hey, you've got all the skills and experience. Let's go and share that knowledge with local businesses and help and support them directly. Wow. So how does it feel to then be on the other side a little bit? Scary. Yeah. Terrifying. Um, I can really empathise with both the clients and companies that I work with in terms of what their their needs are and helping mm-hmm. them support them, but also the job seekers who are mm-hmm. actively looking for work and how challenging it is. It can almost be a full-time job looking for a new job in itself. Mm-hmm. And understanding that um, from an employer's point of view, how to manage all those candidate pools and leave a positive experience for them is really important. And that's what I try to do with businesses and the job seekers. And it's a very important job and people need help with it as well. They need help with finding work. What are the typical tasks that you have to do on a daily basis? So my Day varies enormously. Um, mm-hmm. Really depends on what I'm doing, whether I'm actually doing the recruitment or I am working on my business development to build up my client base. At the moment, it is about, uh, as a new business startup, getting more customers and clients on board. So most of my day is, is spent looking at networking market research, business development conversations, meetings, and lots and lots of coffee. Did you have a vision in the past that maybe you'd end up doing something like this? I think for me, my career since leaving um, the services, I was in the REF many moons ago, Mm -hmm. and I worked in personnel and loved the helping helping people, the people contact that I had with that role. When I left the services, I got a job in recruitment. That was my very first role. And mm-hmm. I've always, throughout my career, worked in either careers, education, personnel development, HR-related roles. So I always knew I'd be working in a role that's going to help mould, shape and develop people for the future. 
And once again, we need people who are going to do that. We need people to help other people grow. It's good to hear. So how has your business grown recently? What have you had to do to make it grow? So market research is really important to understand what people need. Questioning them, understanding what um, motivates them, what drives the business forward, Mm -hmm. what opportunities they they have for people, what challenges they face. They Mm -hmm. may have challenges in sourcing people with the right skills and experience, or they may get people starting their business and then struggle to retain that Mm -hmm. talent within their business or a common theme that I actually hear was we've recruited someone into the business and it's like um, their identical twin has turned Mm -hmm. up and it's a different person that started the role from what was an interview so there's lots of ways I can help businesses to make sure that the people are the right one and the right Mm -hmm. fit for their organization. Yeah one thing that I've personally thought about is that when you are looking to employ somebody a lot of the time you're looking at their past but what's really important is the future so how do you differentiate there between understanding the difference between the past and the future So I have a huge network of people that I've worked and supported with over the years. And one of the key things for me is um, is understanding what that um, short term need or long term Mm -hmm. goals are, Mm -hmm. because this is where the vision and what their key objectives and drivers match what companies own personal visions and drivers are. Mm -hmm. So understanding what that individual is looking for in the future. And one of my favourite questions is why? Mm -hmm. So I always drive down, why? And Mm -hmm. why do you want to do that? Mm -hmm. Because understanding the individual can train on skills and experience, Mm -hmm. but um, cultural fit is is what drives that person to get out of bed and go to work every day. We spend mm-hmm. a long time at work, so it's important mm-hmm. that you love what you're doing as well as um, understand what the companies are looking for and it's it's going to motivate you to want to be part of that um, mm-hmm. uh, goal. Yeah, it seems to me like it's really important to have somebody in the middle who understands the needs of the client and the needs of the company or the needs of the, the person looking for work and the company because neither really sees completely what the other needs. No, and I think that um, being um, independent from both, I can uh, ask questions that Mm -hmm. perhaps um, people who are attending interviews would not be confident to be able to ask the organisations and businesses and act as a a mediator between the two, negotiator, to make sure that um, they they both have Mm -hmm. uh, exactly what they want out of the partnership in the future. And um, that, that works well. For me, it seems that there's lines that maybe other people can't cross, but maybe you can because you mediate. And maybe that helps. I think people just tend to open up. I um, I think it's really important to build that level of trust so that people understand that what they tell you is confidential and uh, wants to present both your organisation and your unique selling points in a good light, as well as what the individual is looking to um, promote. But also really important is what the development areas are for the individual. Mm -hmm. So we all have development areas and uh, we're good at underselling yourself. So drawing out where where your strengths lie and where your development areas is really what what I try to do. So an an organisation getting a new hire in will understand where they can hit the ground running and where they need to spend time in developing that individual as well for the future. Fantastic. What are typical kinds of recruitment mistakes that a company might make? So uh, companies uh, know their business inside out. Mm -hmm. They are the people that know intrinsically what their needs are, uh, what their wants and where they want to see their goals Mm -hmm. and visions for the future go. What happens sometimes is that they forget to ask 
the individual mm -hmm. if their goals and visions are, are aligned because they can sometimes be too focused on the skills and experience that that person's done in the past. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's important. It's important to understand what the technical ability is. But um, it's more the question and techniques. And that's where sometimes we have the opinion, thought we had the perfect candidate. And when they started, their output just isn't where we thought it would be. Mm -hmm. They're not delivering. We, perhaps the company is um, missed, understood how much training and investment that person actually needs, or they haven't reference checked or background checked the individual. And um, they're... Everyone wants to present the best version of themselves at interview and perhaps um, just scratching under the surface a little bit more to interview would help them to understand if that person was the right fit for the business in the first place. So that's always a challenging situation um, mm -hmm. for companies because they feel they've got, I've heard the word bad hire. I don't believe that anyone is a bad person. I don't like this term. However, they are the wrong fit for culturally for their business. And um, so I think that companies can learn uh, through questioning techniques, sometimes their advertising campaigns are uh, attracting the wrong type of skills and experience throughout. Um, so looking at that and sometimes they're just not attracting people at all. So mm -hmm. they're getting no responses. What happens when a company employs somebody and they find out the person is not the right fit or not what they expected what should the company do next well that's that's challenging uh, there is always a probation period some companies have a, a short probation period three months some can mm -hmm. be six months some can be even up to as long as 12 months although mm -hmm. it's very rare mm -hmm. um, but between three and three is normally the average yeah. three to six and the during that time they need to set very clear um key performance measures for that yeah. person so that the individual knows what they're trying to achieve mm -hmm. um, to showcase and settle into the role. And companies um, can understand where someone is at so that they can measure their performance and support them with any training gaps mm -hmm. that they might have. I have a tricky question for you. Mm -hmm. What's more important, hiring the right person or firing the wrong person? Ah, that's a good question. I think hiring the right person will save you lots of headaches in the in the future, not just for the business, but ultimately for that individual that has started in a role and then thinks, oh my goodness, what have I done? I, mm -hmm. I don't fit here. This isn't what I was expecting. Yeah. And uh, so hiring for initially the right person so that it doesn't happen mm -hmm. is much more important than getting rid of that company, uh, that person yeah. from your company. That creates so many ethical issues, mm -hmm. challenges, yeah. and um, may hinder your attraction in the future for, for new recruits coming into your business. Yeah. If you don't make the mistake, you don't have to solve the problem. Yeah. You must be very busy within the work that you do. How do you manage and organize your time? So f recruitment is a very process-driven um, mm -hmm. process. It's actually very simple mm -hmm. <laughs> in terms of how to do the recruitment. Um, the challenge is uh, for companies is that it's only one task mm -hmm. and it's usually not their primary focus in their business and their operations. Yep. Um, it's a hat I wear every day, day in mm -hmm. and day out, and therefore it becomes natural in my day-to-day -day task to manage that, mm -hmm. um, that role. So the recruitment process, I'm very organised. I could not live without my uh, electronic calendar. Uh -huh. which I plan daily, weekly, monthly, and my whole year ahead, mm -hmm. every single year. Mm -hmm. What do you use uh, more of? A laptop, a mobile phone, a tablet? I'm never off the phone. Okay. I love speaking to people. So mm -hmm. if I'm not seeing you face-to-face -face in your business, I'm on the phone chatting to someone. So my phone bill is huge. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine. Is there... A lot of competition in your market and how do the companies deal with this competition? So if there is competition. <laughs> well, locally, interestingly enough, there is no specialist recruitment consultancy that mm -hmm. specialise only in permanent 
staffing solutions for companies. Right. So therefore, mm. you could say I'm yeah. the only competition <laughs> is myself. However, there are multiple employment businesses who actually hire temporary staffing. Mm -hmm. uh, most people think of them as um, temp agencies. Yeah. Yeah. Now, these agencies do an amazing job fulfilling a short-term need mm -hmm. for staffing. I'm more about looking at the long-term future right. um, for both individuals and, and businesses to invest in their employees of the future and fill those skills gaps. Mm -hmm. The companies share a lot of information between each other? Uh, our our uh, sector is not known <laughs> <laughs> at all for sharing and okay. um, uh, news and practice. We have a really good recruitment employment confederation, which um, is a plethora of up-to-date yeah. um, yeah. best practice news and information where we all go to. However, we don't often communicate mm -hmm. with each other, which is just yeah. a shame because yeah. we have loads of skills and experience and knowledge that we can actually use to enhance the local community. What I do have is uh, a good network of colleagues from previous employment that have moved into various parts of the country mm -hmm. and I use my network as my support mechanism so um, from recruitment managers to yeah. HR managers and legal teams. Oh that's great to have that and uh, that's part of how the past prepares us for the future I think as well and if we share we can all grow the principle of the the rising tide raises all ships Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of industries fall apart when people keep things to themselves. Totally mm. agree with that, G. It's mm. really important. Uh, sharing of knowledge is good, um, but what you do with that knowledge is ultimately um, more important. Yeah, yes. How do you define success within the work that you do? So success for me is uh, marked by a thank you, really, mm -hmm. Uh Thank yous mean so much to me uh, because I know that someone is pleased with the service that I've provided them. So that uh, thank you comes naturally once uh, the organisations have um, settled somebody into their role and they're getting on great and really mm -hmm. sort of um, establishing themselves within their teams and the individual who perhaps I've given them a helping hand in finding that dream job sounds like the right way to look at it. It's always puzzled me the importance of qualifications. How do you approach that element when working with companies and looking for the right kinds of employees in terms of mixing qualifications together with experience? When I work with companies, uh, it really does depend on the role that I'm recruiting for. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking for accountants or I'm looking for legal professionals, they do tend to need that qualification in order to practice in their, their industry. However, there are some roles where um, companies may consider um, whether they need the qualification, yeah. um, such as HR with the CIPD qualification, or whether or not you can um, do the role through mm -hmm. your knowledge skills that you've gained over time. Mm -hmm. Chefs is a great example. Yeah. There are many chefs out there in the industry that don't have qualifications, mm -hmm. but they've started off as kitchen porters and actually grown yeah. and developed throughout that kitchen. And some of our leading chefs in the industry um, never went to technical college at all. So mm -hmm. um, there are some superb chefs out there that don't have the qualifications, but can turn a rosette standard meal around. Mm -hmm. And there are some who has gone through technical college as well. So there is no right or wrong answer. No, mm -hmm. The college will definitely give you the skills and experience and knowledge that you're looking for, give you some trial opportunities. Um, but sometimes employers will invest mm -hmm. in their staff from the bottom up and train and develop them as they go, which yeah. is great. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to somebody who's 17, 18, 19 years old, they've not done well at school? and they're not quite sure how to progress in the future, what moves should they make? For someone of that age group, um, there is 
huge amount of opportunities. It doesn't matter what you attained in school if you mm -hmm. didn't get the qualifications. Um, there is always a path. There's a great movement called um, No Wrong Path that was mm -hmm. run by the Developing Young Workforce. And that is so true. It's about understanding what options are available for you. And Skills Development Scotland do an amazing job actually signposting and supporting those young people through that path. Where I can help and support is offer feedback what I've seen in the industries that they're interested in and what other people have done in order to try and get there. Mm -hmm. I was doing some background reading about your work from your website and I saw that you have some interesting pacts or promises that your organization presents or uses. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So in business, it's really important that people understand a bit about who you are, which is mm -hmm. why I'm here meeting you today, Jay. Ah. Um, and um, and understanding what drives me forward mm -hmm. in, in my business. And one of the things that I've created is PAX, which is our, our company values, which talks about being passionate, accessible, mm -hmm. community-led, very transparent and solutions driven and uh, these are the areas that I work with both my candidate pool and mm -hmm. job seekers and the businesses. Yeah it makes it makes perfect sense I mean you're going to need to be passionate about what you do because it gives you energy you're going to need to have accessibility as uh, you c people need to find the company companies need to find the people um, community is always important it's the bigger picture the transparency, you've got to be open, I think. You can't hide things. And solutions-driven, because every problem is an opportunity. Yeah, and every company or person's personal circumstances is different. Mm -hmm. There may be some similarities, but it's unique to you. So uh, every solution is um, personalised for that business. Yeah, and I think there's a little bit of the future that's unpredictable as well. We don't quite know how a lot of things are going to develop. So we have to be open to that idea as well. Definitely. Change. Change. Yeah, changes Changes are necessary for, uh, for progress to occur. It's clear to me that you have a lot of energy for the work that you do. Where does your personal energy come from? So it's really passionate. If you love what you're doing every day, you you spring out of bed <laughs> in the morning um, yep. and that that's important because you look forward to your day ahead mm. and um, I speak to so many people who don't feel like that and that's when they have they understand they have choices mm. you know everyone's got a choice in life and the only thing we really can control is our own mood mm -hmm. so you choose the mood that you're going to be in and face the day every day and I know for some that can be extremely challenging but it's still the only thing that you have ultimate control over. And I think that's important because choosing your mood and chasing mm -hmm. your passions will ultimately lead to you having a successful day. Mm. Do you have any personal habits or tricks and tips to help you with your energy levels and finding your passion? Um I love outdoors. I love yep. being outdoors. I love mm -hmm. nature. And that's that's important for me. So, you know, I love getting up first thing in the morning, taking the dog for a brisk walk yep. and embracing whatever the day's mm -hmm. weather is going to throw at yeah. me. And the words of Billy Cornley, there's no such thing as the wrong weather. It's just <laughs> the wrong clothes. And I'm a strong <laughs> believer in that. Yeah. Well, you have to believe that if you live in this area. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I think. Except I have to say today, it's really beautiful. Stunning. Outside, quite quite amazing, quite amazing. What is it that you enjoy most about your work? People, really, mm. people. Um, I'm. I love communication. I love talking to people. I love listening to people, understanding their stories, and and that is great. And I feel very privileged that people want to share that information with me and um, it's it's great as a recruiter interestingly I will give you a little tip mm -hmm. I'm really bad with names okay. and um, I come across thousands of names across my desk every day um, but I always remember your story mm. so if you tell me your story that's how I remember you 
sometimes I won't even remember faces, but I definitely <laughs> remember yeah. the story. Well, yeah, we, we need something more. <laughs> we need something more than, than a face and a name because it doesn't really tell us everything. What do you not enjoy or at least find difficult about the work? So I think in terms of uh, me, one of the things I've found that from coming out of large corporate organisations I've been used to working with to working as a solopreneur <laughs> sort of thing mm -hmm. yep. um, is um, that crack and banter in the office. I really miss mm. having those people around to use mm -hmm. as a sounding board and uh, I tend to spot that for either getting out to more networking meetings to meet people and the phone bill. Uh, mm. So on the phone, connecting with people there. But uh, that's probably one of the biggest changes that I felt um, for myself in setting up is is having those people around you to support um, and provide fun and amusement throughout your day as yeah. well to keep you motivated. Yeah, absolutely. I noticed you had some papers with you and on one of the papers was a very interesting looking chart with colours. It's a circle and it's divided into four parts and there's blue and red and green and yellow. What's what's that about? So I think in terms of recruitment, a lot of people ask me, how do you manage to make sure that it is the right fit? The person does have the right sort of personality traits mm -hmm. that's going to work with their business. And I've been very fortunate to have lots of um, uh, learning development courses that I've done. Um, that includes psychometric testing and mm -hmm. uh, colour analysis of, of individuals mm -hmm. and the one area that does resonate with me and is when I meet people, I listen, mm -hmm. watch their body language, observe mm -hmm. them and uh, explore their likes, their dislikes. And th from that, you can build up a picture of someone and you are not stereotyping. I want mm -hmm. to make that very clear that it's not pigeonholing or stereotyping people but everyone has more dominant traits mm -hmm. that it comes out naturally particularly at times of stress levels yeah. and the can come in to me I see you in different colors uh -huh. so the red individual is someone you definitely want in an emergency but will take control mm -hmm. of the situation um, can evacuate at the drop of a hat be very organized disciplined um, someone who's yellow perhaps be great in sales they're gregarious outgoing people mm -hmm. person um, green is very grounding and someone who uh, uh, can share a lot of empathy but their mm -hmm. family orientated and tend to have that nature nurture um, mm -hmm. characteristic and then you've got blue who are maybe introverts, very mm -hmm. um, uh, calm and measured, uh, loves statistical analysis, detail, um, you know, great for professions such as accounting. Mm -hmm. And so these are some of the kind of dominant traits that mm -hmm. come through that help you to understand people's personality. And when you've mm -hmm. got a team, that's why I like going into businesses and actually seeing their teams, operating yeah. them, listening to them, and uh, because you can pick up energies and vibes and then you can help to establish what is the right fit. Um, our industry is becoming very automated in the future, which is great, um, but it doesn't give you that body language mm -hmm. and that signs and of what that personality fit is going to be within your team and that's where the good old-fashioned human popping into yeah. your office creates uh, an abundance of difference of getting the right hire mm. it's very important to understand that because teams have different players who have different roles and different functions to perform i'm really curious do you have any idea where i would fit into that so in terms of your um, initial role reversing, you're quite an inquisitive person mm -hmm. and you certainly come over as uh, inquisitive and w want to listen, empathy, but you also have a very measured tone, tone of voice, <laughs> a very mm. um, family orientated person from your posts and features that goes out there. Mm -hmm. So. I would say that you, you come across quite dominant and green, quite mm. a grounded person. Wow. If I am in that area, would there be some things that I need to improve on? Or is it enough to be just 
good within one area or, or do you need to be good in all areas? So we all have traits whereby, depending on the job role that we're doing, that we have to move through all different colours. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is no one colour that is better than anyone else others Mm -hmm. a lot of people may feel oh I want to be another color (laughs) but it doesn't matter we can all develop skills and experience so that you cross boundaries and um, but it's where your natural comfort zone uh, sits it's what's important what you are like Mm -hmm. under times of stress and pressure you tend to fall back into what you you feel most comfortable Mm -hmm. with and that that's all it really displays is where is your natural empathies lie and um and where do you move i i come across very red and yet very yellow Mm -hmm. and i have to focus really hard when i have to be blue and analytical and um, sit down and do my bookkeeping which is why i've gone accountants (laughs) to help me with those areas that um doesn't excite me as much yeah. Well, that's a great point. There might be some things that come naturally to people and some things they need to focus a little bit more on. What's important for you work-wise at the moment, right now? What's key? So I am a new business startup and mm-hmm. um, for me it's really important that I get out and meet as many people as possible People have to know who I am, what I do. Um, So networking is key to Mm -hmm. understand what other people's businesses are, what their needs are, loads of market research. And that is fundamentally my first um, starting point. Um, Success breeds success. So, you know, as as I'm filling roles for organisations and helping people with their their next step on their career ladder, then those testimonials and um, stories Stories that people then can share with others will actually ultimately see me grow in my business year on year. Where do you begin with the market research? So the market research is is tough. Um, uh, it's um, anyone that's hiring, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see quite visibly when they post out uh, adverts that people are looking for staff, they need staff. Um, However, everybody's really busy. So actually getting in front of those people and actually having that conversation and making time to understand if they have a need or if they don't have a, a need is probably one of the most challenging parts that uh, I've, I've been coming across, particularly with people that I don't know. Um, most of my business that's been coming through me just now has been through recommendation. So mm-hmm. once I actually do get out and explain to people what it is I'm offering and understand what their needs are, um, they might not have that need themselves but they, mm-hmm. they then pass my details on to other people so um, word of mouth and recommendation is is really vitally important and I would love to have small businesses just phone me up ask me for a coffee and a chat mm-hmm. advice is free I always say in my world and more than happy to go out and find out and explore what needs and challenges there, because that ultimately will help me shape my business to be um, needs-led for the community that I'm supporting. It's interesting to me that you talked about how busy a lot of businesses are. And when you're busy, you can't focus on everything. You might miss something. How do you cross over that barrier and get your information to businesses that are busy? So it's sharing content. So I share information um, on social media platforms, um, through network, through speaking to people Mm -hmm. on sort of training courses that I, I attend, and just snippets of information yeah. I've, um, I've wrote a blog about mm. who works well in small businesses to try and help people take the time I'll, or I'll phone them up and I'll ask them when is a good time to actually have that conversation with you so that I understand um, and people are very generous but sometimes it's about you know hitting them at the right time when they have got that space to be able to engage absolutely in fact I read your article and I enjoyed it. I I did. I did. I found it on LinkedIn. I think it's there. Um, It was about what makes a great employee in a small business. Uh Could you talk a little bit about that? 
I think with small businesses, um, as we get into a small organisation, we have a role and a function that we want that person to do. And it's really important for businesses to be quite clear and understanding where... Um, where the gaps are that they need somebody to bring in to to fulfil that, um, but the individual as well is um, it's really important that they have a desire to want to learn more about the business because mm -hmm. ultimately in a small business it is about rolling your sleeves up, getting stuck in, um, helping out in other departments um, as and when required, and these are important because it's. Um, uh, a small team, harmonious team. Nobody wants to see anybody in that team mm -hmm. struggle. And it's about making sure that ultimately the end goal is achieved. So the positive side of that is that you will learn so much more. Um, you maybe be brought in to, um, you know, liaise with customers and process all their orders. But in order to make sure that that goes out, you might have to jump in and mm -hmm. actually pack pack yep. boxes, yep. help them get onto the back of the wagon and go to mm -hmm. the customer's store and then following up to make sure that customer experience is important and they come back to you. So it's you will learn everything from marketing mm -hmm. to sales to distribution to order processing. Um, so I think in a small business, if you're the person that likes to juggle and likes to learn lots of new things and wants every day to be different, mm -hmm. then absolutely you, you're going to work really well in there. However, if you're a specialist in your field and you just like to focus and be absolutely the best marketing professional there is, then you might want to look at uh, specialising or working for a business that gives you that opportunity because of the volume of work in that area to mm -hmm. only do that one role and actually be the go-to person for that particular area. So it's, it's important. That's a great insight. Thank you for sharing that. How do you stay informed about changes in your line of business? So I use... Um, uh, areas such as Expert HR, um, which is a platform that keeps up to date with the employment leg legislation on there, and also the Recruitment Employment Confederation. Um, I keep up to abreast of any changes that uh, occur, and I'm part of their newsletters that come through. And I'm also a member of the Federation of Small Businesses, which is a, a great go-to. They've got an amazing legal team that you can pick up the phone and ask some questions or pose up-to-date information. Um, they recently helped me out with a modern slavery policy, which mm -hmm. was which was great help. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to keep abreast of all the changes, especially in my world, that changes all the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and making sure that you can support businesses or at least go to those experts, particularly in HR, that might be able to um, specialise in, mm. in those fields and signpost companies. What is modern slavery? So, <laughs> modern slavery, um, I think in pe people's minds, a lot of people think that um, uh, slavery happens to third world countries. It mm -hmm. doesn't happen in our world because, you know, we're a, a modern fourth forthcoming and proactive organisation and community. However, um, there is the Modern Slavery Act that highlights, I suppose, to everybody that it could happen to anyone. Um, you know, people you see on um, the news stories about people desperately coming back in to the country and coming through in containers. However, those people some of them might not be uh, mm -hmm. as a result of their own wants and desires and be led into the country. And, you know, it's about being um, open to understand and identify that and reporting anything that you you see is not right, not comfortable. In my world, um, as I said, people are very open to share their stories. And as a, as a professional, everything people tell me is confidential, but mm -hmm. there are areas of a field that there's a risk or someone's being led or coerced that I do have a duty of care to report that. Mm -hmm. How is your work-life balance? 
at the moment not very good <laughs> as, as I'm sure many people will tell you when you're mm-hmm. starting up your own business yeah. it um, it is uh, all consuming and yeah. um, tends to take over your world a little mm-hmm. bit um, but I think that, that that balance in life is really important and I do try to take a, a little mini break every six weeks or so just to recharge the batteries and as I said earlier to you G, it's really important to um, get out into the fresh mm-hmm. air breathe it in and yeah. um, take a moment to yourself and nature helps me do that yeah I did that this morning actually I just went outside and sat in the sun for 15 minutes and uh, just enjoyed enjoyed the fresh air and it's it's empowering it just gives you time space to mm-hmm. breathe relax and um, enjoy what what we've got here in money it's yeah. amazing uh, absolutely totally agree if you could wave a magic wand and change one thing about your industry or your work, or what would you change? I would say reputation. Mm-hmm. I think that the recruitment um, world has over the years um, become sullied a little bit in the industry and has got a bit of a, re- a bad reputation. There is thousands upon thousands of really professional recruiters that I've come across during my time in my career. And some amazing people whose uh, desires, wants is just to help that individual or local community grow and thrive. Mm -hmm. And there has been some people in our industry that's motivations hasn't been right, um, that perhaps not the right drivers for the role, the service is... um, it hasn't been great and people remember um, that experience and uh, they feel a little bit nervous. Um, the word recruitment agency, when you speak to people, so some people who have had that bad experience and it's about understanding and sympathising with them what those experiences are because they're absolutely real. They, you know, they do exist and I'm not going to say that they're not in our, our industry sector. Never have a magic wand. It would be to eradicate all those people out of the wrong roles that they're sitting in and put them in different <laughs> different opportunities yeah. and, um, and, and make sure that our industry is seen as one that is leading the way to the success and driving that success for um, entrepreneurs and business professionals in industries and sectors. Mm. I was in a library once in the career section and I picked up this book and I remember it was green and it was very thick and it was, I think it was just titled Careers and it had lists of all the different types of jobs that exist in it. And it was huge and it were thousands and thousands and thousands of different jobs that people could possibly do. If you're a young person, how do you deal with that and find the right path? Well, I think that book would very quickly become out of date. For him. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, that's where the automation in, in the industry is, is, is great because there are some really good resources where you mm-hmm. can go online and explore. I mentioned Skills Development Scotland earlier. Yeah. They've got the My World of Work and there's some online um, uh, quizzes that you can mm-hmm. do that helps you to actually understand what type of role might suit your personality depending on the questions that yeah. you, you give it does say that I should be a DJ however <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure on this interview that's going to be the case for the future or my no- depth of knowledge on music but uh, but it's to give you an idea and clearly that comes up for me because I do like communicating with people mm-hmm. and interacting with people and uh, but it does just help you uh, understand what kind of opportunities you might t- explore or the things that naturally you like enjoy doing um, uh, prospects uh, uk is also a really good site where you can go on and actually drill down okay i've decided oh, i do want to be the dj of the future mm-hmm. what qualification skills and experience how do i get into this world and um, so those tools to be able to signpost yourself personally and professionals to help you guide you as well are all available online there's no excuses for people yeah, there's a job and career path out there for everyone. But as I said earlier, it can be a full-time job looking for a new job or understanding. I had a, um, a chap phone me just this morning, actually. He says, could I help him write a CV? First question I said is, 
what type of um, job are you looking for? What, yeah. what are you thinking? I've no idea. Um, and this person's mid thirties, early forties, and it's not. It, there are so many people out there with yeah. the same boat, and they keep thinking. I, w- I know I want to do something different, but I don't know what that is. And what I ask them to do is to look at the area, what was important to them. Do they want to stay in the area? Mm-hmm. So if they want to stay in the area, they want to look at what opportunities is in that area, where the growth businesses are, and do does that interest them? And mm-hmm. if that business interests them, what opportunities does that business have? What is the role, skills and experience that you need for those positions? They might not have it now, but where I can help is to help them understand where to how to get from A to B. Mm-hmm. And it's important to have that explanation sometimes because you can feel really lost within the information because this is the information age and there's so much of it. What is important in terms of information to put on a CV? I think people become a bit too stressed out about the CVs. I think the one thing to remember is CVs is great to, to have, but it's just a marketing tool to get you in front of that hiring manager so that you can then tell them all the skills and experience and why you'd be um, great for that company. And importantly, it is a two-way process. So it's for you to learn about them and their organisation and can you see yourself working within their business. So a CV is just a marketing tool. It's uh, one of the areas people struggle with is um, selling your own strengths capabilities and um, blowing your own trumpet you know it might be a cultural thing I don't know but they they really struggle in putting that into words so I tell people to look at um, perhaps what other people are telling them their appraisals they've maybe had in in work what have they said about their strengths and really highlighting those successes I tell people to think about the acronym CAR What's your challenge that you faced in work? What actions did you take? And what results were? I think car is much easier to remember than star. So we we focus on car. Um, And what was the positive outcomes? So telling a story on your CV to the organisation, it should be changed every single time. Um, CVs that I get through sometimes come with a just list of tasks and duties that they've Mm. done in the last job. Um, doesn't really tell me anything about you as a person so it's it's really important to personalize that so that we can see what you did with those tasks and duties you might have had them as as your responsibility but you might not have done some of them so Mm -hmm. it's really important to showcase you on that cv and personalize it and um recruiters and hiring managers we maybe only spend about five to seven seconds per cv and that's um that's sad when you spend mm-hmm. days working on yeah. it. But yeah. it's true that those keywords have to jump out to make you stand out um, yeah. because it's, it's literally just a marketing tool. So mm-hmm. identifying yourself um, and your skills and putting that across eloquently on your CV is really important. Um, and that's what I do. So some people struggle with that and sometimes I'll, I'll help them with their CV and developing that and drawing out that skills and experience through interview questioning um, mm-hmm. to get them to sing their praises a little bit more and um, put it down on paper. What was that acronym that you had? CAR. And that stands Challenge, for? Mm-hmm. Action and Result. I'm going to have to focus on that. I think that's a really, really nice way to uh, remember the important processes that are necessary. So when a person's creating their their CV, obviously the information is important, but the visuals must be important as well. Yeah, so um, CV should be uncluttered. Mm -hmm. It should be clean. I would utilise bullet points to draw the reader's attention into the key areas you want them to notice and Mm -hmm. highlight. Uh, You should use the same language as the company that you're Mm -hmm. working or want to work for uh, uses so that you can showcase your understanding of um, their culture. And 
um, people do tend to try to put too much information on it. It really should be tailored so mm-hmm. that you can tell the reader a story about you and they, as they are reading it, can visualise you doing that job and mm. understanding you as an individual or person. If you have a list of tasks and duties that you've done in your last job, it doesn't bring it alive. And um, if we are inundated with applications, we do tend to scan through these very, very quick, quickly. And if I've got um, very small print and thousands mm-hmm. of words on it, um, you're not going to get read immediately. Yep. So it's, you, it, it is a, a tool to make sure that you stand out from a cluttered crowd. Yeah. And maybe young people can find local agencies that can help them with something like that. There is loads. There's a plethora of information available for people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I do, because Skills Development Scotland do work with young people and the My World of Work has got a CV template on there. Uh-huh. Um, what I would try to do is to shy away from um, using the template words um, that you see on job boards because mm-hmm. um, as a hiring manager, if we see two, three, ten people all using the same one, we know you haven't put your own work into it. So yeah. we can see them and identify them very quickly in a, uh, a line-up of CVs, yeah. if you like. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't tell really about you. Ask your friends, ask your family, ask your boss. You know, give me three words that will describe me. How would you describe me? And use those words because that's mm. what people are seeing and feeling from, from you. Uh, great advice. Thank you very much. Do your clients have real or unreal expectations of your work? I think I set the expectations very clearly when we're working in partnership. Um, And it is a partnership. One of the key areas that I hear all the time from um, people looking for their next career opportunity is they don't get feedback. Mm -hmm. Um, They put the CV in, they fill out application forms and they hear nothing 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 it's so destroying it really it um, creates unsettlement for the individual and it uh, can damage your um, kudos as a business and um, impact on future attraction as well so it's really important those expectations and feedback is one of the expectations that I expect from every partner that I work with Um, both the candidate when they go to an interview Mm -hmm. is to give me feedback on that experience so that I can pass that on to the interviewer and also the business on what they felt to the candidates and um, myself I will ask for feedback on me so it's 360 feedback that I operate on and it's really important that sharing because you can reject a candidate and tell them no they weren't suitable they just want to know why yeah it's a great question why what can communities do more to support people finding work i think in terms of um, helping them find work they can make sure that it's promoted Mm -hmm. so recruitment as I said is a very process driven um, experience if you follow a very clear recruitment process absolutely businesses can embrace this and do a really good job attracting candidates themselves to interview Um, where I help and support is where businesses aren't getting it right and I can proffer some training and investment in them too so that they can showcase and and learn from my experience but also um, they sometimes just don't have the time you know as I said the reason they cut corners in terms of how they're doing the recruitment process or not being able to give that feedback to every applicant or even acknowledge every CV that comes into them is time Um, Mm. so I will make sure that everybody has that experience from their firm and, um, and gets that feedback so that if another opportunity arises and then perhaps they're more suitable they will reapply great points great points in terms of influence recommendations and practicality what book should everybody read so the last book that um, i read was um, who moved my cheese um, mm. and I don't know if you've come across this and I'm trying desperately to remember the author's name but it's a very short book and it was phenomenal to get you to think about doing something different one of the key areas um, that I hear time and time again is people saying 
well, I I do this and I do it every day and I'm I'm not getting the results that I'm expecting or I'm applying for hundreds of jobs and I'm not getting the job that I'm wanting and but they're doing the same thing over and over and over again. And if you do the same thing over and over again, you will always get the same result. So looking at something different, changing the hiring process, changing your um, job seeking process will ultimately breed a different result and will be more successful for you in the future. So that is something that really resonated with me. Um, It's literally a five minute read. So go and find who moved my cheese and understand that, you know, that is a real life example that I see every single day. It's a very unusual title. Why does it have that title? It is about literally um, three mice (laughs) (laughs) running through a maze and um, they are habitual. Um, Mm -hmm. Mice are habitual animals and they do keep following the same processes where they've gone before, follow their tracks back to Mm -hmm. where they found the cheese before. And uh, one smart mouse decided to go and follow a different route Mm -hmm. and actually was rewarded by a much bigger plethora of cheese and the other mm. two died. That's a very sad story. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. I think it resonates in business generally that mm-hmm. um, businesses that stand still, they may be very successful now, but if they're not moving forward with um, changing technologies, people, situations, um, then, you know, it becomes more and more challenging. We see that in the high street every day. Yeah. There are few rewards without some level of risk involved. Yeah, risk is is good. You know, um, put yourself out there. I I certainly don't feel comfortable being the interviewee Mm -hmm. compared to the interviewer. But uh, you have to put yourself out into situations that do make you feel uncomfortable and and learn that you will only learn and grow from it. Try it. See mm-hmm. see how you get on. Feel mm-hmm. the fear and do it anyway. I don't know who said that, but I like it. <laughs> I think you said that. Did I? <laughs> That's mine now. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, your business is on fire. You can only grab one thing as you rush out the door. What do you pick up? Oh, it has to be my mobile phone. Mm-hmm. Um there is nobody in my business. Uh, people is always important to me, but it's just me. Mm-hmm. So as long as I can get out with my mobile phone, I can reach everybody and continue along as normal. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, my, my world is online now. Mm-hmm. On an abstract level, time travel is possible. Where would you go and why? I probably would not change anything because I think that um, every step of the journey that I've taken along my path has helped me get to where I am today and without that journey I wouldn't be in this position and this opportunity to have just now. Yes there's been struggles, there's been times that's been incredibly tough. Um, I've uh, uh, face many challenges like many other working mums. I've had three small children under the age of five and you know, extortionate childcare fees to support them yep. to continue my career path. And um, But would I go back and change it? No, because it does have a, a stepping stone to mm-hmm. where you, you reach. Um, but I do sometimes don't spend enough time to sit and think back about what I've learned from that experience. So if time travel could take me back to remind me Mm -hmm. what I learned, then that would be great. Mm. What kind of legacy do you think you will leave behind? So for me, I would be, I would love to see the business really flourish so that in the future that can um, take off and I can franchise out Recruitment B to, um, to share the experience with other communities and and not just here locally and develop other people to actually, you know, embrace that challenge. I'm Mm -hmm. one of the first people in my family to set up my own business. And, you know, there's that little thing, can you do it? Can you do it? Mm -hmm. Because you have got nobody to learn from. So I would like to pass that knowledge, skills and experience to motivate others to operate their own uh, recruitment business and going back to our industry is not good at sharing knowledge. Well, as a franchise, I can share that knowledge with others on how, how I got started in that journey. And I would, so I would like to leave that behind in the future. And um, I have asked my children, would they like to inherit the business in the future? Mm. And one of my daughters actually works in recruitment herself. Mm. And, um, and she says, no, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. 
Why did you choose recruitment B as the name? I'm just interested about the B element. So bees are amazing. <laughs> they, mm-hmm. they are hardworking, they're very generous, and um, they always strive to get the end result. So mm-hmm. I think the B is synonymous with, yeah. uh, you know, the hardworking people we have yeah. in, um, uh, in the industry. And recruitment was important because there's so many names that as a consultancy business I could have um, put down the yeah. LW consultancy <laughs> but it doesn't really tell people what yeah. they do yeah. and there's actually somebody already called LW oh, consultancy okay. so I can have okay. that either okay. um, so I wanted something that just um, uh, stood out to mm-hmm. understand that uh, it was about a workforce and and be you could be whoever you want to be well and bees make honey as well yes and honey is nice sweet yeah yeah so how do people reach out to you and contact you where can people find you so people can find me on multiple channels um you can Visit my website, which is really simple, www.recruitmentb.co.uk. And uh, my contact details are on there as well. So you can give me a call and uh, speak to me directly or pop me an email over if you, mm-hmm. if uh, you want to arrange a convenient time. And that's just Lorraine at recruitmentb.co.uk. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Social media, leave me a message. Tell me your thoughts. Share yeah. share your experiences with me. Like my posts. Dislike the posts. Tell me why. <laughs> um, yeah. Feedback is a gift. Yeah. Um, what's better, to contact you through LinkedIn or Facebook? So in terms of um, both, um, lots of businesses contact me via LinkedIn and mm-hmm. seems to be their preferred method. And um, lots of job seekers contact me through Facebook. So that's the experience where most people I feel are communicating with me. So either way is, is easy. I wanted to make sure that I'm as accessible as possible. Hence, one of our packs is accessibility. Mm-hmm. So you can reach me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, yeah. LinkedIn and our website fantastic I would like to thank you very much for coming in here today and for sitting down with me and sharing the wealth of information you have about this topic I would also encourage people out there to do what you've just advised to get in touch with you and to find someone who can help them if you're a company find the right person and if you're a person find the right company because we all need a little bit of help and support from time to time so i wish you and your business great success for the future and thank you so much for your time this morning no thank you g for taking the time to see me it's been a privilege and a pleasure and um I, ultimately i um i look forward to hearing lots more businesses that you interview in the future it's really fun Thank you so much. Made in Bari is a product of the Academy of Language Therapy and Life Coaching. Book a free online personal or professional development consultation today. What are you waiting for?